Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum students. This is your instructor Amina Hassan uh, and today's lecture is lecture number 30 for reading uh, English comprehension and composition. Uh, so we are going to start off with uh, talking about how um, important a dictionary as a resource is, how it is used, how many various types of dictionaries we have and um, how to actually try to use uh, a dictionary in an effective way as a resource for students um, not just for the subjects of English language, apart from that, so many other subjects as well. So, um, moving on, we will be uh, starting off with um, talking about this resource that is um, on uh, dictionary skills, um, and this has been um, is is being used for uh, your understanding here, and it is developed by um, Leslie Childs. Uh, in uh, the New Bernesque uh, Community College, which is of course um, a very good resource uh, to be able to understand um, these particular elements of uh, how to use a dictionary. Um, a dictionary, as I told you earlier, is a very important resource uh, for students of English language. Whenever you come up with an unfamiliar word, uh, you want to know about the origin of a particular word, uh, you always go back to a dictionary and try to find um, the meaning or the origin or um, anything that you want to know about the word to be able to comprehend its meaning in a better way. So um, these are the f teaching points that we'll be discussing today, um, some briefly but some with examples and exercises. Uh, we will be discussing um, how alphabetical order is important. Um, most of you might already know how to um, list down words in alphabetical order, but we will be revising it again. Then um, we will also uh, introduce advanced alphabetical order. Uh, we will try to identify different types of words in a dictionary, like guide words, entry words, like they are also called head words. Uh, we are going to talk about syllabification, um, how words are divided into syllables so that they are easier to um, divide uh, into parts and also um, easier to pronounce. Um, we will also talk about multiple definitions of one word in a dictionary, uh, how they are classified and how uh, we, suppose we are supposed to identify them in an entry and try to understand their meaning. We will also see how plural forms are identified in a dictionary, irregular form of verbs, synonyms and antonyms which are very important for students who are focusing on uh, writing um, because uh, sometimes there are very difficult words where you need to um, have better options, easier options or maybe uh, more uh, complex and lofty options for one word. So uh, you um, consult a thesaurus uh, where you find uh, synonyms and um, antonyms. We will also see how dictionary um, dictionaries identify abbreviations for parts of speech because it's very important sometimes to identify a part of speech of a word that you are looking for the meaning of. Brief introduction to etymology of an entry. Etymology refers to the origin of a word, where it came from, who used it first and which language boasts of uh, having used it for the first time and use of dictionary to determine the correct spelling. One of the most important um, features of a dictionary um, is to uh, help students remember and um, realize the importance of spellings of words. Um, certain terminology related to a dictionary uh, is guide words, entry words, syllabification, root words, prefixes, suffixes, uh, some dictionaries are abridged versions, some are unabridged alphabetical order. These are some um, terms that we will be discussing in uh, a lot more detail in a minute. Um, then the entry parts are phonetic symbols. When you look at a word in a dictionary, there are a lot of symbols that are just ahead of that word. Um, they are called phonetic symbols which help you identify the um, pronunciation of the word. Then there is part of speech. We see its forms, whether it's used as plural or singular or irregular or uh, other type of, of verb and if it is plural how do we form its plural and um, how its irregular form is used. Etymology um, most of the times at the end of the entry there is that origin of the word um, who used it first and where it came from. 
then we have definitions there are certain terms in dictionary where they they which have very long definitions we also find them in entry parts and we have the identification of uh, either the word is synonym or antonym then cross references as well whether this particular word could be found in any other definition or not and that's where that reference is found then we also have um, table of contents in a dictionary of course th these are some technical parts that a, a dictionary um, is uh, made of uh, you we, we all have a very clear idea uh, as to how a dictionary is used and uh, these are some of the parts that we'll be discussing from this resource um, we will see how um, a dictionary is introduced um, what is it then where dictionaries came from and uh, are w one type of particular dictionary is different than the other or better than the others or which dictionary should you as a student or I as a teacher by types of dictionaries what is alphabetical R order and affixes and prefixes suffixes that's what we're going to briefly talk about when should I use a dictionary it's not just uh, to um, try to identify the meaning of a word sometimes uh, students only practice spellings of words sometimes they uh, want to know more about the origins of different words so this is uh, all that we are going to discuss in today's lecture. This particular resource is very um, useful because it has a lot of exercises along with it and uh, you can take out time um, and do those exercises and find the answers at the end of the same resource as well. But it would always be advisable um, to do the exercise first open your dictionary in front of you and practice it and then look at the answers to see wh how well you have performed and whether you have uh, achieved the correct results or not. So moving on um, the introduction is uh, to this uh, resource is how to use the dictionary that is using the dictionary. Good mechanics sometimes use a current repair manual when repairing a car and cooks often consult a recipe book but only a few people both at school and work regularly use a dictionary yes in our uh, Pakistani scenario as um, as teachers we often observe that students hardly ever go back to a dictionary uh, to find the meaning or any other thing related to the word they um, sometimes in the class try to uh, relate to um, students sitting next to them ask the meaning if that meaning somehow comes out wrong uh, that's where they lose a lot of marks and most of the time students rely on the teacher to provide the meaning for the word that they are unfamiliar with but it's always a good idea to have your dictionary with you these days the paperback dictionaries especially the advanced uh, English language dictionary in, uh, in English advanced learners dictionary is um, very uh, a thick resource that of course all students cannot carry to their uh, colleges and universities all the time but uh, the modern technology offers you the um, facility to have a dictionary downloaded in your phone smartphone or even in your laptop so it's always handy to open it up and try to find the meaning of that word dictionaries are easy to use and contain much more helpful information than most people think now that you are in academic upgrading you need to know how to get the most out of your dictionary this is um, important for students early on when they uh, start getting involved in more um, complex writing procedures or even uh, uh, learning to speak um, in, in, in more advanced settings just like you in your course when you have to present in front of an audience even if it's your class and there are teachers sitting in front of you you need to be able to um, have complete command of your subject because it's very important for you to know what you're talking about and that also includes the meanings of important terms definitions and their um, origins and sometimes pronunciations and spellings so when you have completed this module you will know uh, more about dictionaries than most people um, this is of course um, an objective of all modules that talk about English la uh, using uh, dictionaries in uh, the university settings successful writers and communicators have at least one dictionary beside them and consult it regularly while they work and if you start doing this practicing this you will see 
that it's going to help you a lot using a dictionary or other word reference book is not a sign of weakness or lack of education if you ask for a, for the meaning of a word that does not mean that you are any less of um, uh, knowledgeable about english language so go ahead ask a question about the meaning of the word and better so open a dictionary and try to find the meaning it shows that you are serious about using english well and making sure people understand exactly what you are trying to say so that your writing is more communicative and your speaking is even more understandable dictionaries help with spelling grammar and punctuation rules as well as pronunciation and they often include essays on the history of english lists of famous people and places along with a variety of symbols and abbreviations this is an added benefit of a dictionary if you look at uh, the oxford advanced learners dictionary uh, the latest version it also has a lot of information on how english started off there are many different types of englishes when you uh, move towards the end of the dictionary there are allied pages uh, which uh, inform you about the history of various words um, various different types of englishes that are used all over the world including australian english um, canadian english uh, south african english even and uh, british and american english of course some dictionaries include pictures color photographs national flags and maps dictionaries can also be used like mini encyclopedias this is very true for oxford advanced learners dictionary as well and so many others uh, which have been mentioned in this resource also now what exactly is a dictionary when you, somebody asks you this you always say a, a reference book that contains the meanings of words and but it's not just restricted to that a dictionary is a reference book containing words usually arranged in alphabetical order and it gives information about their meaning pronunciation etymology and uses etymology again refers to the origin of the word from where the word cre was created experts estimate that there are more than a million english words today more than uh, uh, this because mm, it, uh, it this particular research refers to uh, the data that was provided uh, some time ago so when we look at the present um, data th that could be gathered that w would have been gathered a little time earlier um, it would be even more the revised oxford english language english dictionary lists about 615000 words but only about 200000 of them are in common use more than in german and french to catalog all those words takes many large volumes any book or set of books which is complete as it was written is called unabridged because no part of the original has been left out so this is the difference between abridged and unabridged dictionaries abridged unabridged dictionaries are the ones or books or resources are the ones where the original anything that is that was originally added was never omitted it is the same it has uh, been uh, sent to the uh, coming generations in the same way the dictionaries sold in most bookstores are shortened versions of a complete dictionary and are called abridged dictionaries because some of the original has been left out this is the difference the abridged dictionary is the one in from which some of the portion has been taken out uh, and it is slightly altered form of the original where did dictionaries come from students who are um, studying history of english literature they uh, all must know that um, there was a time during the development of english language and literature when um, samuel johnson in 1755 uh, created the first dictionary collected the most important words that were used on, in those times and uh, made a book out of it and it was considered to be a very important resource the first book that we would recognize as an english dictionary appeared in england in 1721 about 280 years ago we could recognize this book as english dictionary but it wasn't the uh, refined form the best known early dictionary however was published in 1755 by samuel johnson in england by then the printing press was of course introduced he recorded and defined the words that he read and heard every day his dictionary also standardized the spelling of many words until about 1900 whenever people used the word dictionary they meant johnson's dictionary his dictionary is still consulted today to find the meaning of a word as it was used in his time today there are many different dictionaries available some are small enough to fit in a pocket or purse some are so big they require their own stand most of the dictionaries that we find these days are very very big but some that are smaller are of course subject related they're subject specific sometimes um, a medical dictionary that is very small that is called a pocket dictionary as well uh, students of medicine they can have it in their hands whenever they are uh, in a hurry to find a 
you look, look through it quickly and find something. So um, is one dictionary better than another? Whether there are different types of dictionaries where you can term one as better than the other. Not all dictionaries are created equal. When you first go uh, looking for a dictionary, you may be surprised to find that there are many different dictionaries available. Not only do they come in hardcover or paperback, but also they vary widely in number of entry words, size of print, kinds of information included, and cost. These are some of the factors that affect the um, quality of a good dictionary. They are, they are hard hardback or paperback. Sometimes they uh, have a lot of uh, number of entries, which of course makes it a very thick volume. And then sometimes it's the size of print. Some dictionaries have very small print. That's why they try to accommodate a lot of words. And sometimes they have bigger prints. And kinds of information included. Some dictionaries omit certain uh, features of the entries. Uh, because they believe that there are other dictionaries that would cater to that, but most of the dictionaries carries o carry all the entry points. That's why they are thicker volumes. Use what you learn in this module to help you decide what kind of dictionary you want to own. This is when you are trying to decide which dictionary to buy. Consider buying a hardcover dictionary for your home because um, it will be used and you can put it in a shelf and keep it safe. One good dictionary can last several lifetimes. You might also want to have a lightweight paperback version to carry around with you because the hard paper, pa uh, hardback would be difficult to carry. Two of the best known dictionaries of the English language are the Oxford English Dictionary, sometimes called the OED, and the Merriam-Webster Dictionaries. Oxford uh, English Dictionary uh, has its advanced version uh, that is called Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary uh, these days, and its uh, newer versions keep on coming up. And Merriam-Webster Dictionaries mostly contain, of course, these days, all dictionaries contain both American and British English entries and other Englishes as well. But Merriam-Webster basically uh, is started off as an American English dictionary. The OED is published in Britain and focuses on the spellings and meanings of words as they are used in British Isles, although it does include references to the way words are used in North America. So this is the difference between both types of dictionaries. This particular resource, of course, has a Canadian background, so they have also talked about Canadian dictionaries. There are certain um, differences in how people use English in Britain, uh, Canada, and America. So um, dictionaries are always a very, very helpful resources because they um, identify these differences, these changes, and help students uh, understand, try to remember them so that they can use them consistently whenever they are speaking or writing in English. Which dictionary dictionaries should uh, I buy? Before you buy a dictionary, look at it carefully. Are the letters big enough to read easily? Does it contain all the kinds of information presented in this module? In this module as well, and apart from that, your own personal need, uh, whether you want to carry the dictionary around to take it to your university, that's um, an important question for you to consider while you're buying a dictionary. Apart from that, of course, uh, print should be big enough so that you can easily read it and also um, the kind of entries the dictionary has and its uh, quality uh, as well. Some dictionaries are better for one purpose than another. Decide how you are going to use your dictionary. Check several thoroughly before you decide which one to buy. Do not just look at the name and bring it home. Uh, check through it and then uh, consider paying for it. Larger dictionaries include special reference sections of the beginning and end. Check to see which one contains the kinds of information you are likely to need. In general, the bigger the dictionary, the better and more complete it is likely to be. Yes, that is um, the rule. If the dictionary is very big, thick, of course, it will contain a lot of entries, more information for you to consider when you are dealing with unfamiliar words. The most expensive dictionary may not necessarily be the best one for your purposes. So do not go for paying more money for something that is not good quality wise. Decide whether you want a dictionary with British, Canadian or American pronunciation, meanings and spellings. In Pakistani scenario w where we teach English, we always um, m focus more on um, British English spelling and pronunciation earlier on. But with the passage of time when students go into colleges and universities, they tend to use American English more than British English. But the catch to it, this is that you have to be consistent. You are not supposed to use uh, both British and American when creating a piece of assignment, for example, an essay, a paragraph, or a research article. Uh, you are supposed to be consistent. 
and for that you have to use American spelling and um, writing style and everything else um, right from the beginning till the end of the document um, not um, you know sh putting in a British style uh, again and again in between a hardcover dictionary lasts longer than a paperback dictionary we all know that it's it will be more durable uh, it will stay for long so try to consider buying a hard paperback dictionary eventually you might want to own more than one dictionary sometimes there are types of dictionaries that are very very important to have uh, there is uh, this um, another resource um, very closely related to a dictionary called um, thesaurus um, that gives you synonyms and antonyms of words students must have one thesaurus with them um, as well because it is very important for them to be able to see oh, what kind of different dimensions of a word could be used in a, in a composition and this definitely would help their uh, writing and speaking skills become more polished and uh, refined the word dictionary means a book of words listed in alphabetical order in current use in any language there are dictionaries for every language on earth and there are dictionaries which provide translations from one language to another these days such dictionaries are very much popular because people traveling from one from one place to another um, sometimes have difficulty in uh, communicating with the people in uh, in a in an alien land in a totally different setting because they don't know the language so if they have a dictionary with them there are important words that they can translate and communicate in a better way most people know about french english dictionaries but there are also spanish italian dictionaries and german swahili for example there are even dictionaries for languages that haven't been spoken in thousands of years like latin classical greek or sanskrit Specialized dictionaries are also available. The reference section of a library or bookstore may contain a dictionary of sailing terms, a dictionary of medical terms, or a dictionary of legal terms, to name just a few. And there could be many others. When you are studying literature, you might use a dictionary of literary terms. You must have used it so far, so uh, you must know how that is different from a regular dictionary because that would only provide you with the um, definitions and detailed explanations of certain terminology certain references that uh, are recurrent wh while you are studying literature you can even buy a visual dictionary that includes for example a very precise detailed diagram of a ship to which the correct names of the smaller parts like forecastle steerage spar are attached sometimes we have pictorial dictionaries as well in uh, oxford advanced learners dictionary we also see a lot of illustrations along with the words some in one version there are colorful illustrations and the other they are black and white so it's sometimes very very useful for you to look at that picture and try to identify and understand the meaning of the word in a better way another type that i just talked about was thesaurus that is this the pronunciation is also written there thesaurus a, a thesaurus is a dictionary of synonyms or words with similar meanings for instance when you are working on a piece of writing you may find that you have used the word nice over and over again this is boring for your reader and does not allow you to see, say what you mean clearly if you use a thesaurus to look up the word nice you will find many alternatives listed like pretty flavorable pleasant polite and many more you simply read the list and pick the word that best carries the meaning you want so this is how thesaurus works sometimes there are um, words that are repeated over and over again in your composition and it makes your composition very very um, dull sometimes not very catchy not very gripping and in turn boring so you pick up that word look through the thesaurus and try to find similar meanings of the same uh, word and try to insert that uh, in your composition so that it becomes more uh, interesting for example the nice clock helped me choose some nice flowers for my nice ways the pleasant clock helped me choose some beautiful flowers for my pretty ways so the second sentence of course sounds much better than the first one because the word nice is repeated three times in one sentence so it becomes redundant very very repetitive now warning regarding uh, using a thesaurus is is very very important here because uh, sometimes students just uh, pick up words that are listed in a category of the same word but they do not understand that in various different contexts th those words me might mean uh, different uh, give different senses so you you are supposed to be very very careful while choosing uh, using a thesaurus because you have to pick up a word that uh, fits in the context in which you are writing so that your writing does not become um, 
in any way uncommunicative, uninteresting and um, sometimes grammatically or logically wrong. Thesauri are available in two different types. This is the plural of thesaurus depending on how the contents are organized. The first kind is organized in alphabetical order like a dictionary. If you need a synonym for nice, simply look the word up and uh, you uh, would find it in the dictionary. Each entry is followed by its own synonym and antonyms. In some cases, the user is referred to another entry word. Simply choose the synonym that fits your idea best. The second type of thesaurus may seem a little more complicated at first, but it, it offers a wide range of words to choose from. Begin by looking up the word you want to replace in the index at the back. The entry word lists a variety of categories relating to the different meanings of the word you looked up. For instance, the word sweet suggests the categories taste, kindness or cute. Each category is followed by a number. This number does not refer to the page number on which you will find that word. Instead, it refers to a section number. Find the section number and then choose the best word. If you can't find anything suitable right there, try skimming the rest of the entries in that section and you may find something useful. So the second type of thesaurus is um, a little more complicated in use uh, because it is divided into sections. And if you are looking for the uh, synonym for word sweet, it would be either in taste, kindness or cute. So go and find it under that category. You might find much better options for that. Now moving on to the important technical sections of a dictionary, we will talk about alphabetical order in, in uh, briefly and then uh, some uh, entry uh, ideas, um, the entry words that are there in a uh, dictionary and then some exercises. When words are arranged in alphabetical order, they are easier to find. In other words, all the words that start with A are placed together. All the words that start with B are found together and so on. This is how when we were kids, when we were uh, learning English, we started off understanding how alphabetical order works. These days, when you are composing a word document, um, it's always easy um, to divide your list or write your list or make your list in uh, an alphabetical order because you just have to click a button and it, uh, the computer does it for you. But it's an important skill that you need to have because if you're using a dictionary um, over and over again, it's always good for you to be able to know uh, how alphabetical order works so that you can find your uh, required words easily. But how do you arrange words that start with the same letter? This is uh, catchy. Look at the second letter and put the words in alphabetical order based on the second letter. If the first two letters are the same, then look at the third letter and place them in, in alphabetical order according to the third letter. So this is how it works. If the first two letters are the same, then look at the third letter. So this is how it works. Look at this example. Unsorted. They are not in uh, this first list that you can see right here is not in alphabetical order. And these, of course, are in, in, in alphabetical order. Abbreviations and acronyms are also listed alphabetically in the dictionary. For example, the short form for British Columbia is listed after the word bat and before the word bed. So because British Columbia starts off with B, so it will be listed in between the word bat and bed. Similarly, words like 3D are listed as though the number, would were, uh, number, uh, the number word were spelled out. For example, um, look for the word 3D between three cornered and three day event. So 3D uh, will be in between these two because it is spelled out as 3T. Words that begin with the abbreviation uh, ST that is saint are listed as if the abbreviations were spelled out in full like this that is saint. And similarly here are some examples of how telephone dictionaries are uh, categorized. Now we come up with exercises. The first exercise that you have here is asking you to organize these words in uh, alphabetical order. There are um, A, B, C and D parts of this exercise. You can uh, always do uh, all four of them. Take some time here and um, try to do the first one uh, and the second one. Uh, it will take around 5-7 minutes for you to divide uh, or write this list in the alphabetical order. And you can always find the answers to these exercises on page 33 of the same resource. Uh, so that uh, once you are done uh, with the making the list in alphabetical order, you can always go back and check your answers. Moving on to exercise number 2, uh, which of the words below would fit alphabetically between fern and pat? 
and for exercise A, part, exercise 2 part A, the words would be gift, mat, that would fit in between the categories of fern and pat in the dictionary. So that would be gift, mat, motor, fun, hat, igloo, justice, farm, letter, pan, kitten, moral, monster. This is how you are supposed to divide and any uh, one or two words that are not there would of course be ex excluded from the list. And on the similar pattern you can do the remaining exercises. Now moving on to what are affixes, prefixes and suffixes. Some of you might already know these terms. Um, this example that is there it, it is self-explanatory it helps you understand how it works uh, you see pre pay able this is the word that we are talking about here pre is the first part that has been added to the uh, um, second part that is payable and then the last one is able that has been added to the word pre pay and making it uh, a complete word prepayable that is communicative in its own way. In order to use a dictionary uh, effectively, you need to be familiar with how some words are made. A simple word like pay is called a root word. The word that is in the middle, right here in the circle that is pay, is the root word. Out of this root, they have created a, uh, a prefix and a suffix. Prefix, as the name suggests, is fixed. Um, you know, pre that means before the root word to convey a different meaning. And similarly, suffix is fixed at the end of the word uh, to convey something different than the root word. Syllables or groups of letters are often added to the beginning or end of root words. If a syllable like pre is added at the beginning of the word, it is called a prefix. So you would now have the word prepay. If a syllable like able is added at the end, it is called a suffix. Now the new word is payable. This word affix is a general term that includes both prefixes and suffixes. When you say affixes, that includes both suffixes and prefixes, but prefixes are attached before the words and suffixes are attached after the words to convey a different meaning. Take the root word legal, for example. What does it mean? Now look at this example. Um, the word legal is used here in a sentence. It was legal to park on that street at night. If you add the prefix ill before uh, meaning not to the beginning of the word, you get the word illegal. So how the meaning of the uh, sentence changes? In the dictionary, you will find prefixes listed alphabetically looking like this. This is how uh, your prefix will look in a dictionary. Whatever prefix you have added to a word, it will be uh, separated by a dash from the main word and you will understand that it's a prefix or suffix for that matter. See how a by adding ill to legal the word the meaning of the word becomes totally opposite and the same sentence becomes totally different. It was illegal to park in that lot at night. In addition you can add the suffix by uh, ly that is li changing the word from an adjective to an adverb. This is a very important um, suffix. Um, when we add ly at the end of a word, uh, it changes it into an adverb, to the end of the word. Now the sentence must change its structure to accommodate an adverb rather than an adjective. You will find suffixes listed alphabetically in the dictionary looking like this. Dash and after that the word. So look at these sentences. Uh, it was parked legally in that lot all night. It was parked illegally in that lot all night. So adverbs are words that modify or tell us more about verbs. So, so they are supposed to be very close to the verbs they are modifying. Similarly, it was parked legally, whether it was there mm, um, and was, was not breaking any rule or any law is legally and when it was doing that, of course, illegally. So adding ly at the end of the word has changed the part of speech of the word as well and the meaning as well. Look at the chart on the next page to see more examples of how new words can be made. Looking at these examples, 
you see disagreeable they have divided it into prefix root word and suffix this is a very uh, simple exercise you can always pick up words uh, find uh, see a random word in a, uh, in a dictionary or a newspaper and try to divide it into prefix and suffix uh, disagreeable prefix of course is dis root word is agree and suffix able similarly unabridged un is the prefix abridge is the root word and ed is the suffix now look at exercise number three and this is a very important exercise because you need to practice suffixes and prefixes here uh, you have to underline the prefix in each of uh, the words listed below then secondly you have to try to guess the meaning of each prefix you have found and then record your answers in your notebook check your answers in the dictionary correct your list if necessary so looking at this list when you see um, let's not do all of them you can do them on your own let's pick up one or two and see how um, it will help you understand the difference between suffixes and prefixes uh, look at this uh, word that is uh, number three in the first list that is first column antifreeze now we all already know what the meaning of anti is and we also know the meaning of freeze so freeze is the root word here and anti is the prefix which means against or opposite or totally on the other side so antifreeze means which would not freeze so underline the prefix in each of the words listed below anti would be the prefix try to guess the meaning of each prefix anti means against record your answers in your notebook of course this is what you have to do with all these um, words that are listed here so you can take some time and do this exercise and compare your answers at the end in the answer area looking at part b of um, the same exercise it says use each word above in a sentence you, to show that you understand its meaning do this exercise as well because if you choose any five or seven words out of this list and use them in your sentences it will be even more uh, even better for you to remember their meaning and also uh, be able to identify prefixes and suffixes in uh, other words as well exercise four underline the suffix in each of the words now the practice uh, for suffixes uh, you have to do the same write a sentence using the word without its suffix this is slightly different you, you separate the suffix and then uh, the use the sentence the word in a sentence the root word in a sentence write a sentence using the word with its suffix compare the two sentences to see how each of the two words is used now um, let's look at the word um, commitment for example underline the suffix in each of the words list listed below um, the suffix that is added at the end of the word would be meant and write a sentence using the word without its suffix you separate the suffix and the word the root word is commit so you use the word commit into in a sentence um, it could be um, I was afraid to commit uh, for um, the upcoming lunch because I was busy somewhere else it it could be like that so uh, this is how this exercise works you also have to write a sentence using the word with its suffix that is the word commitment um, if you make a commitment to your friends um, you should try to follow it so that your friends uh, are not angry with you the mm, word commitment is very clear its meaning is very clear here compare the two sentences to see how each of the two words is used um, the word commit of course uh, after removing meant from it became um, a verb and adding meant made it a noun so commitment would be a commitment that you make to someone and commit is the action of committing so this is how uh, by adding prefixes and suffixes you can change the part of speech of the word as well moving on when should I use a dictionary this is a very important question uh, it depends on what you want out of a dictionary there are students who only like to practice uh, spellings um, 
on a dictionary at your level at a university level at a younger level of course students should be exposed to um, a lot of various different uses of a dictionary so that they are able to see how they are supposed to use it adapt it according to your uh, their requirement use a dictionary often this is very important use it more and more whenever you re require uh, whenever you are unsure about a word look it up people judge you by how well you spell and use words of course your communication skill is very important for you to be able to um, you know give certain kind of impression about your personality and uh, understanding of english language so it is very important that you know how to use a dictionary and you know the meanings of words that you are talking about dictionaries contain a wide variety of information about um, words people places animals flowers history grammar even how to address a letter and much more there are there are a lot of information in, contained in a dictionary so it is it's always a very very good resource for you to be able to see why and when you use it now moving on um we are going to talk about the entry um heads or points or headings that are there in most of the dictionaries all over the world in this particular resource that we are using here they have picked up canadian oxford dictionary from which they have um, discussed the entry words but um, um, the ad english advanced levels uh, um, advanced learners dictionary oxford advanced learners dictionary also has the same entries so let's generally talk about them and see how it works the first one first entry is um, guide words guide words are uh, at the top of each page of a dictionary um they are on the uh, either side of a page indicating a uh, certain um, guidance or road map to uh, what word that is and where it is it is located on the top of each page of the dictionary you will find two guide words printed in large dark type the first word is the same as the first word at the top of that page the first word that is on the top left corner of the page is the first word of the page and on the top right corner of the page the uh, the word that you see is the last word on the same page so uh, you don't have to open up a page and look at the first and last word you only can look at the top of the page and you you know that this is where you are and this is um, whether you are close to the word you are looking for or not using alphabetical order you will find all the words that naturally fit between these two uh, guide words on this page for example they have given a page number in uh, from this particular dictionary so that you are able to uh, practice but you can practice on your own dictionary by opening it up and seeing uh, that there are two um, bold type words on the top of each page indicating the first and last word on that page second entry that we have is the head words the words you look up on a page are printed in bold type the words the actual words that you are looking for the entries in uh, a dictionary are called head words and are called head words look up the word uh, ferret that is on page 5 or 6 of this particular dictionary it is written in bold type and found towards the middle of the right hand column they have also given you the location you just open your dictionary randomly and any all the words that are listed in the bold type on um, all four in all four columns of your dictionary are called the head words then we have the syllabification many dictionaries divide words into syllables it's very important for you to be able to remember the spellings to be able to pronounce the words in a better way and also to focus on the uh, accent of the word so that uh, its meaning is very clear um syllables or sound units often by placing a dot or slash between them um in oxford advanced learners dictionary both dots and slashes are used to indicate um syllabification knowing where to split a word correctly is useful when you cannot fit the whole word on a line and must hyphenate it on to the next line while while you are writing on a paper um with your hands or even um in uh, in a word document sometimes you have to divide that long word into pieces and for that you need to have some knowledge of syllabification see how the word is split when there isn't enough room for it on the line the example when john and elizabeth moved into their new apartment they bought a ferret because a friend said they were quiet pets now look at the word ferret at the end of the line its first syllable is written at the end of this line and then you have the dash and then the remaining uh, syllable uh, on the next line so this is called syllabification because it's very important while you are 
writing uh, your own composition so see this word syllabication is also divided into um, its own syllables by putting dots in the middle then uh, number four is another very important entry that is there in the dictionary that is called phonetic symbols phonetic symbols um, might not be um, very easy to grasp for you at this level if you do not have um, a, a very clear uh, knowledge of what they are um, how they are represented and uh, to be able to transcribe mm, words into phonetic transcription um, but a dictionary always helps you with that as well again just like I told you earlier it's a great resource uh, Oxford advanced learners dictionary and all dictionaries for that matter have their own um, phonetics chart before the uh, entries in a dictionary start so if you have any problem identifying a particular sound you can always go back to that chart in the same dictionary and uh, try to understand that and be able to pronounce the word in a better way uh, next look at the funny looking symbols that follow the head word and are set off with black slashes now um, they are funny looking symbols because sometimes students don't understand them but with um, students who have some knowledge of them of course they are very communicative and their pronunciation of course is much better than most of the students who do not know them these symbols are phonetic symbols they're not as mysterious as they look and show you how to pronounce words correctly even if you have never heard or seen them before every dictionary has a list usually at the beginning or end of the book titled pronunciation symbols or pronunciation key so it helps you um, identify these symbols so it's not that difficult at your level of course you can always uh, read a self-explanatory chart of symbols and go and attach them with words and try to uh, gather the meanings for for this it's um, a very important tip is that you can pick up a very simple word for example table chair of of whose pronunciation you already know so that you get yourself acquainted with various symbols and then try to go for very difficult complicated words now you see this chart that has been given here is um, just to give you an idea how sounds can differ from the letters that they, they represent. So, so the first column says consonant that is uh, C, G and S but sometimes the consonant C in a spelling represents the sound K that is K that is represented in the second column hard sound example candy, cold, cut, culture, class, soft sound like S C can give that sound as well. It's not just K. Examples, scent, city, right? Centaurus. Then we have uh, the consonant G that gives the G sound that is gain, got, gun, but also soft sound like gem, gin, gym. So it's not necessary that the consonant, the way it looks like, it will only pronounce that particular sound. It can be different. So this is how uh, phonetic symbols help you a lot in uh, trying to identify the meanings of uh, the pronunciation of words and then in turn looking at their meanings so we also have a list of vowels vowel sounds um, underneath this particular um, table that we just talked about these also have several different pronunciations and these of course um, you can understand by looking at some examples in the next paragraph uh, almost at the end of this paragraph the symbol looks like this uh, E and the pronunciation guide shows that it is pronounced like the E in bed say the word bed and listen to the sound the E makes so when you uh, kind of correspond one sound to the other uh, to uh, a word in which it is placed you can always um, try to guess the sound of that letter and in turn improve your pronunciation Now exercise 5 of course uh, after studying a little bit about how phonetic symbols work it's important for you to do a little bit of practice. Exercise 5 is practice using phonetic symbols by finding these words in your dictionary. Be sure to check the correct pronunciation of these words by saying them aloud to your instructor. You can always um, say these um, words aloud and check an online dictionary uh, where uh, you can click on the sound button and the um, resource will read that word for you and check it over there while you are um, practicing 
uh, this particular lecture because your instructor would not be right in front of you. So exercise 5, the words are caption, schedule, schedule is the American pronunciation and schedule is the British pronunciation, brian, um, the fourth word can also be pronounced as route and root. Then the next one is route, cough, bow, house, scent, and gerbil. So this is how you pronounce these words, but then you can always go back and find the uh, pronunciation of these words and try to um, correct yourself and also an online resource where you can use these words and understand uh, and see whether you have pronounced them correctly or not. Fifth entry that um, an, a dictionary has are accent marks. Take a closer look at the phonetic symbols for the word ferret. Notice the position of uh, a mark that is like an apostrophe um, next to fair and t. This is called an accent mark and tells you to put a little more stress on the syllable that follows the accent mark than on the other syllables. You say ferret. It is not pronounced as ferret. Right? So this is the difference. If you have uh, this little uh, comma type thing on top of a letter, that means you have to stress it a little bit. So this, these are called accent marks. So this is also an important resource, uh, an important entry in uh, a dictionary. Uh, and this also in turn helps you pronounce words in a better way. We have exercise 6 um, for you to practice here. Exercise 6 uh, option um, part A prefer, preference, refer, reference. Now see how refer and reference are different. Now you see refer by um, putting more accentuated stress on the first sound in the middle but you say reference while putting more stress on the initial r sound and that of course um, gives that accentuated touch to it. So you can practice this uh, on your own as well and similarly uh, again on online resources and answers to these this exercises you can check your answers. Uh, sixth very important entry on uh, a dictionary is parts of speech. A dictionary tells you about what part of speech that particular word that you're looking for lies in. Sometimes it's a noun, it's an adjective, it's an adverb, it's a pronoun, it's a verb, it's an irregular form, whatever that is, it's written right ahead of the word in italics most of the times. And um, if it's, an, it's a small n, that means it's a noun. If it's a small v, that means it's a verb and so on and so forth. Now you can see there is a list of uh, the abbreviations that are used for parts of speech in a dictionary entry. Uh, I, as I just said, it is an N for noun, an uh, adjective, ADJ, then if it's a verb, we, we write VB, if it's a preposition, we write PREP, P-R-E-P, pronoun, P-R-O-N, adverb, A-D-V, conjunction, C-O-N-J, and interjection, E-N-T, E-R-J. So uh, there are others as well, which of course when you open up a dictionary, you, uh, you find more about them. And th these are uh, of course indicating the part of speech of the word that you are looking for. The seventh very important entry is a special form. Some words in English are inflected. If a word has some special forms that are uh, listed after the part of speech, what is the plural of ox, tomato or formula? What is the past tense of dive, rise or spell? If, you, uh, if a word has more than one acceptable spelling, it is also listed here. Usually the preferred spelling is given first. Now sometimes these special forms means that the words uh, have been uh, inflected means they are in a different form than the other words. So they are, uh, they are given separately. For example, the plural, plural of ox is oxen. So it, it's not the um, uh, generalized plural form like adding an ES or S to it. It's a different type. That's why it's a special form. So it's written or mentioned over there. Similarly, uh, the plural form of formula spell is spelled differently and it's pronounced in the same way. So that's what are called special forms. Then um, a dictionary is also very important for um, definitions. Um, most of the times we find very long definitions of words 
uh, in a dictionary because uh, they have multiple meanings as well. Most dictionaries list the oldest meaning first. The first symbol in this part of the entry is uh, N with a dot. This means that the first definition shows how the word is used to name a person. That is, its part of speech is specified, place or thing. A small half domesticated animal of uh, the weasel family. This is the meaning of the word ferret, the example that has been coming over and over again. And then its, its scientific name is written in the italicized word, keeps, uh, keep, uh, kept as a pet or, um, or in Europe used to catch rabbits, rats, etc. The meaning or definition of the word ferret, that's the name of an animal, is a small half domesticated animal of weasel family. The next symbol is we, means that the definition which follows shows how to use the word to talk about an action, that is in the form of a verb. So this is a combination in, w in which a definition is described uh, along with the part of speech of the word. So this is how it goes with um, parts of speech and definitions combined in a dictionary because it's very important for you to see uh, what uh, type, the type of word and how it is being used, what, uh, in which category of parts of speech it is being used. So there are uh, more examples of the word ferret. Then uh, entry number nine in um, dictionary entries uh, is etymology. There is one more interesting piece of information in the dictionary before the end of the entry. It is presented in square brackets or in some dictionary's parenthesis and is called the etymology of the word. I told you earlier as well etymology means the origin of the word. To fully understand the section you will have to refer frequently to the abbreviations page. In the case of the word ferret the abbreviations can be worked out to tell you that the words are used in Middle English um, about 600 years ago. Now the word ferret we come to know uh, was used uh, in its first crude forms in Middle English about 600 years ago. So this is a little bit of the etymology or origin of the word ferret and most of the times it comes at the end of the entry uh, for of any word that you are looking for and it is uh, in most dictionaries it is in the big bracket or the parenthesis. So you can identify it at some time you are only looking for the origin of a word you can always go back uh, go into the end of the word and uh, look at it. Now exercise 7 again um, is asking you to find the origin etymology of these words and write your answers in full sentences. Now there are many words like the word negligee uh, is um, of, of French origin maybe. You can of course open up the dictionary and look at the origin and answer this question. Beast is uh, the word that is of the Latin origin. Similarly, curl, the second word in the first word in the second column is of Dutch origin, and the word ketchup is the Cantonese origin. That was a very old form of English that began in the earlier uh, times in England when uh, there were a lot of conquests going on from their side. Now you also have more exercises. Exercise 8, practice your dictionary skills answering these questions. Uh, let's look at one or two questions and see um, what kind of questions these are and how you can um, do them on your own and find the answers in the answer section. Um, burn, what are the two possible ways to write this word when describing an action that took place in the past? By looking uh, at the entry uh, under burn in a dictionary, you can always find its uh, two or three um, verb forms. Now, they, uh, they have asked that there are two other possible ways to write this word when describing an action that took place in the past. So, yesterday Joe dashed his hand badly. So, when he did it in, uh, uh, yesterday, it would be, of course, in the past tense. So, you'd say, yesterday Joe burned his hand badly. So this is how this exercise works. Take some time and do this exercise and you can always refer to the answers on page 33. Now there are uh, other additional entries in a dictionary as well. That is entry number 10 in a dictionary. The, this additional information includes a uh, style guide, punctuation rules, spelling rules, capitalization. Then we also have uh, Prime Ministers and Governor Generals of Canada, not just Canada. Uh, they are, they are, the uh, flags are sometimes there in dictionaries um, and there are uh, the capitals of uh, important countries in the world and languages and currencies and such information is also there. 
weights and measures um, almost all dictionaries all over the world have this information because it's very important sometimes you need to refer to these and comparative alphabet Arabic Hebrew etc whatever um, uh, the word the origin of the word is sometimes uh, other uh, they are written they are mentioned in a different uh, language as well then we have exercise 9 here again uh, you can practice this and find the answers now this I wanted to specifically talk about because um, uh, number 11 how do I find the correct spelling of a word because uh, many students um, even at college and university level use their dictionaries to uh, remember or learn and be efficient in spelling different words because it's it's a common problem most of us have problems with our spellings first say the word aloud perhaps it's believe think about the first so uh, sound it's a burr sound so you turn to the beginning of the B section of the dictionary right so sometimes when you know the word but you do not know the spelling and still you are trying to look it up in the dictionary what you do is that you say the word and try to guess the meaning uh, sorry the first letter and then go in that section and try to find it so the whole process is not difficult it's not challenging it's not very complicated we have been doing that you can practice this and see uh, whether you are able to identify the meanings of unfamiliar words uh, or not now uh, from here onwards we have um, a list of uh, important entries in a um, dictionary that give you a lot of additional information the first one is guide words at the top of each page of the dictionary you will find two guide words printed in large dark bold type uh, we have talked about this before this is a kind of a revision of uh, um, what we have done uh, you can always go through the shorter uh, summarized version as well uh, but uh, it will always be helpful for you uh, only when you practice these exercises alongside and uh, not just read or listen to the uh, lecture we also have another entry in a dictionary that is cross references some dictionary entries contain cross references within the entry you will find the word see compare or where of that directs you to another dictionary entry which will give you more information about the word you first looked up sometimes when you're looking for a word um, its meaning contains something that needs more explanation so that meaning that explanation that definition refers you or takes you to another page and tells you that you will find this uh, more information on that page uh, and you go there and you tend to connect both the pieces of information and understand the word better now it's um, it becomes simpler because um, when you um, pick up a word to look look up in the dictionary um, in the middle or in the end or anywhere in during the uh, while you are reading the definition or the meaning um, the word any other word that is uh, giving reference to the same word or you have to find it somewhere else is written in the bracket and uh, it's written in that particular entry where you will find so you go there and try to look it up and find the uh, more detailed explanation for it and here is this um, answer key section that I was talking about uh, it contains all the answers to the exercises that I talked about um, do pick up some of the exercises take out time and do them and then find the answers this is exercise 8 9 and so on and so forth there are a lot of other exercises that uh, which of course are there in this resource and you can always um, go through them and do your um, analysis now uh, this was um, the lecture about uh, dictionary skills just to give you um, a little bit of recap of what we did today the uh, dictionary skills include um, your knowledge and understanding of how um, uh, the meaning of a word is looked up in a dictionary there are many different types of uh, entries 
in a dictionary that we talked about in a lot of detail there were exercises that uh, you are supposed to do and find the answers in the same resource and compare your answers and see how you have done uh, there are um, uh, head words th there is that general entry you get the etymology of the word you also have cross references where you find the, the further explanation of the word in, uh, in another section of the dictionary uh, dictionaries also help you understand or um, remember or learn the pronunciation and accent, accent of the word where you have to put stress so these are some of the uh, important sides or aspects of dictionary skills it's a very important skill uh, there are many types of dictionaries you should have the one that that is most um, easy to use for yourself for your field and of course for your uh, understanding so whenever you are buying a dictionary or getting one always buy a good one Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary is a very good one and this particular resource uh, refers to a Canadian dictionary that is also again a good one but again um, in the Canadian setting for for your course for your understanding uh, not just for English language courses there are other courses where you come up with different words which are very very unfamiliar and you have to uh, look for their meaning so um, a dictionary is a very handy resource I hope uh, this lecture has helped you understand the theoretical and practical side of how a dictionary is used and if you practice more if you practice all these exercises uh, you will definitely improve your dictionary skills and uh, learn the meanings of new words unfamiliar words and become a better uh, speaker and writer of English thank you